All right, I'm going to do a very quick tutorial here um, on how I use my portal to deal with all patient messages and issues. I earlier, when I was showing you how to use the patient portal from the patient's end, sent a message from John Doe. This is what it looks like from my end. I've kind of cut things off so you don't see any real patient stuff, um, but I'm going to do a quick show here of what you can do. So over here, you have um, boxes of other things. You have your received faxes and imported lab results. Along the top, I can go into my scheduling. I can um, do a lot of admin. So for example, I can manage my chart parts, which are the templates, pharmacy listings. Um, well, you can read this for yourself. Charge list is important. Um, subscription plans if you're DPC. Alternate plan options are where I put my books, videos, websites, other things that I um, give to patients to do. Health maintenance trackers are making sure everyone's on top of their preventative care. Um, the list continues, as you can see, outside the field that I'm showing you because it's just so long, all the things I can manage. Um, I can manage inventory if I want, um, if I'm dispensing products here in my office. Uh, there's a billing portal. I can't click on tasks but if because there's a lot of patient information there, but that's where I'd look at um, my list of labs that I'm waiting for results back. It's where I have reminders or ticklers. Um, it's where I have any unfinished charts, which I don't have any right now. You can see that little four right there is patient labs that I've sent to myself to deal with and send back to them. Um, so I'll be doing that in a few minutes. Links here I can get to Hippocrates. Um, if you're doing a uh, home visit business, it'll give you your best driving route. Documents are um, both patient handouts that you can put in their portals as well as your own office documents. Um, this is your onboarding tool so you can get a whole lot of patients onto the portal all at once. Help documents and of course logging out. Over on this side, my system tasks will show you anything that needs to be done. Um, so you can see here, this is a fax that I just sent a moment ago and it tried three times and failed. Usually that means the pharmacy um, lab, hospital, other doctor's office, whatever is having an issue. Um, and so I can just uh, leave this for tomorrow, call them, it'll keep trying again. Um, this is where your unsigned notes will be if you have any. Uh, this will be where order results will be if you have any. So a bunch of stuff will just kind of be there in, um, in tabs to remind you what you need to do. Now though I'm going to look at this. So typically I don't have just one thing here. Um, I've done my patient messages. I had four. Um, I try to keep up with these throughout the day. Usually it's quick, easy, short little messages like this. Some patients leave novels, um, but a patient who leaves a novel is still faster to deal with on the portal than talking with them for two hours on the phone. So I definitely like using the portal. Patients like it too. They can message me anytime, day or night when they're thinking of it, um, and they like to be able to review everything that we've discussed previously. So here John Doe was asking for a refill on thyroid medicine. I can very easily just reply. Um, I put it into the pharmacy for you. Um, and then let's say I want to make sure I actually do it and don't forget. I'll go ahead and open up his chart um, here and I would just, oops, start a new thing. I'm not showing you the whole chart here so that we'll be on a safe screen when we go back. Um, prescription refill. And actually that's not, usually I title it um, exactly what I'm refilling. So let me show you what I actually do. Levothyroxine uh, 0 0.088 micrograms. Um, that way I can glance at all the titles, know what I'm doing, or what I've done rather before. So I come over here, renew. Um, let's say that I'm going to only give one refill because he didn't get his labs done like I told him to. And then I'll say complete. So there's his levothyroxine. Um, and I'll just, I'm going where you can't see me, but I'm signing this. I'm not going to send him a note saying that I did it because I'll be sending something over here in the patient portal. I put it into the pharmacy for you. Um, you need to get your lab work done. The order is already into the pharmacy. Let me know if you have any problems, symptoms, questions, etc. And then I'm going to drag this up where you can see it here, hopefully. Actually, you know what? I'll make the screen a little bit bigger. Nope. I can move it down. There we go. Um, 
So then I can either reject the request, which I've never done. I'm going to always reply and say something. Leave the request open. So I'll do that sometimes if I'm replying to them, but I want to leave it in my box so I don't forget to deal with it. Or I can say I completed this request. Then I click send this message. And you can unclick this so they're not notified there's a message. I've never done that. Um, I just leave it because I want them to know they got a message. I say send this message to John Doe's portal. And I'll click that after I've moved the screen back so that you don't. Oops see anything you're not supposed to. All right, there we go. So now you can see there's no, nothing left to do here. And, but uh, that's how fast it is to deal with patient messages if you uh, do everything through the portal. So you can do this with any EMR that has a good, powerful patient portal. You want it all to be integrated um, and you want to make sure that you can do everything within the portal so that you don't have to be um, working with multiple systems. If you have any questions, of course, you can uh, ask them in the comments on the blog post or you can message me privately. Um, but have fun using that portal to have a good quality of life.